Hi, welcome to Anna Prime Recap. You will go through a disturbing experience, where you will need to follow all the orders of a macabre woman who whispers in your ears. We continue our dark journey through Junji Ito Maniac's stories. Let's begin the story of the first tale, entitled, Whispering Woman. A young girl suffers from a serious problem, she is constantly questioning herself about the choices she must make, she needs at all costs someone to answer her how to act, speak or express herself. That morning, Mitsu Uchida comes to the house to apply to be the girl's caretaker, and although the woman doesn't show much enthusiasm, she feels attracted by the job opening. The girl's father explains that no caregiver lasted long in that role because of the numerous questions his daughter asked during the day. While explaining how to guide the girl, Mayumi starts screaming in her room, and the two go to meet her. The girl is panicking and Uchida tries to calm her down, she calmly instructs the girl to sit on her bed and relax. The girl's father is impressed by this and leaves his daughter in the woman's care for the rest of the day. As evening falls, Uchida instructs Mayumi to sleep, and so the girl obeys her. Finally, after her first day of work, the woman talks to the young girl's father and he asks her to continue as his daughter's caregiver, as she has done a great job. Uchida replies that she will be back the next day and says goodbye to the man. After a month of work, the girl's father talks to one of his employees about his daughter's situation. He says that the girl has improved a lot since the arrival of the new caregiver. So far, Mayumi has not shown any more panic symptoms, however, Uchida is always by her side informing her what she should or should not do, through her whispers. The man still does not have much information about the new caregiver, so he asks his employee to investigate the woman. At the end of that same day, Mayumi's father thanks Uchida for her work. The woman says that she has finally found a job where she feels comfortable to work. Her boss notices that she has a bruise on her face, and upon questioning her, the caregiver does not respond and just leaves. After two months, Mayumi's father talks again with his employee and reports on the recent events, he explains that his daughter has improved a lot, but Uchida has suffered over time, as she always looks extremely exhausted. Despite this, the woman continues to perform her job to perfection. At that moment, Mayumi knocks on the door of her father's office and asks permission to enter. She opens the door and Uchida is right behind her like a shadow. The woman gives the girl some instructions, and the girl obeys. Mayumi walks up to the man and hands him a flower she found in the garden. Uchida whispers more instructions in her ear and the girl says she will return to her room, faithfully following what the woman says in her ear. After this, the employee tells the boss that he already has the results of the investigation he did regarding Uchida, he tells him that the woman is single, but lives with a man in her house, his name is Ryo Ichiaga, he has a completely violent and authoritarian behavior. The subject is a complete exploiter and besides assaulting Uchida, he also steals all her money. According to the investigation, he was the one who forced the woman to accept the job offer because of the good salary that would be paid. Mayumi's father then understands why his wife agreed to stay at work. Uchida has the job of giving several clear and precise instructions, but in her own home, she is the one who follows orders. Finally, the employee asks his boss if they should take any action about the violence that Uchida has been suffering. Mayumi's father comments that if he does something against Ryoichi, maybe Uchida will give up on continuing to care for his daughter, for this reason, he decides to leave the situation as it is. In the garden, Mayumi keeps talking to Uchida and all her questions are answered through whispers that only she can hear. After a few days, Mayumi's father receives the news that Uchida has passed away due to a serious injury. According to doctors, the woman was in critical condition and could not bear to live in that situation for long. Ryoichi is being sought and accused of being responsible for this crime, but he is at large. The girl's father, upon hearing this news, thinks only of his daughter and wonders what future the girl will have without the presence of the caregiver Uchida by her side. However, as the days went by, Mayumi remained calm, her father decided not to interfere in anything further so as not to harm the young girl's situation. The girl did everything by herself, but still listened to the whispers with Uchida's commands in her ear, even after her passing. The girl always asked questions and got immediate answers through small whispers. One morning, the girl is training her strength by wielding a knife, she strikes several blows on the ground, but is advised to put more strength into her attacks. A few days later, the girl completed her mission and took Ryoichi's life with several knife strokes. Upon arriving home, her father is confronted with the girl covered in blood. Mayumi reports that she has managed to eliminate Ryoichi once and for all, she says that Uchida asked her to do this, after all, in her last words the woman said she would always stand by the girl. Our second story today is entitled, 4x4 Walls. On a dark night, a boy walks alone through the forest in search of insects, he has a frightening appearance and always carries nails in his mouth. At home, Koichi is trying to study hard for an important exam, however, 
The boy becomes totally distracted when he hears noises coming from the attic. He quickly goes to his father to report the problem. Koichi says that it's probably his brother, Suchi, who is causing all this chaos, but at this point, his sister replies that Suchi was watching television next to them the whole time. Koichi is confused by this and decides to just go back to his studies. A short time later, the boy begins to hear someone singing. The song saying that he will do poorly on the exam and get a low grade. Koichi is once again enraged, as he recognizes that it is his brother's voice. He comes out of his room and starts chasing him, after running through a few rooms of the house, Koichi manages to immobilize the younger boy. The bizarre boy says that he wasn't singing any songs, but his brother doesn't believe his words and decides to take him to his father. After they are reunited, Suchi claims that his brother has become neurotic and that whoever was tormenting him is actually a poltergeist, a restless spirit that makes strange noises around the house and lowers the room temperature. Koichi replies that he doesn't believe in this fanciful explanation, he says it's cold because it's winter and the noises are caused by his own brother. Suchi says that the boy will be sorry for scoffing and not believing in poltergeists. A few minutes later, Koichi goes back to his room to continue studying, but he hears strange knocks and soon realizes that some objects around him are floating. He wonders if this is really paranormal activity, however, as he approaches the items, he identifies that they were all being controlled by lines. Koichi follows their path and realizes that they were all coming out of his closet. When he opens the door, he is confronted with his demented brother. Suchi insists that he was not responsible for the noises and that it really could be the presence of a poltergeist. The next day, Koichi asks his father to do something about his youngest son's disturbances, or else he will leave home. The man replies that he will call a carpenter to insulate the room, so that he will no longer have problems with any noise, however, Suchi was listening to all the conversation behind the door. The next day, Koichi comes home from school, his mother informs him that the carpenter was already working on acoustically insulating his room, the boy is excited by the news and goes in person to talk to the carpenter. His name is Tagaisu, he has a bizarre and frightening appearance, the man says he will use modern techniques to block out any sound in the room, he explains that he will use four walls to stop all outside noise. Tagaisu says that four walls is the perfect combination, because in Japanese the number four has approximately the same pronunciation as the word death, so this construction will have good results. Koichi also realizes that his brother was on the scene and with a hammer in his hands, hitting some nails. The boy quickly tries to remove Suchi from the scene, but Tagaisu intervenes and says that the young man has a talent for hammering nails. The carpenter then invites him to help put the walls back in place, Koichi is afraid of this, but does not interfere. A few hours later, the boy talks to his parents about the room, and his mother tells them that Suchi has been helping Tagaisu all day. She says that the carpenter even complimented him on his nail hammering skills. His father says that finally someone has said something positive about Suchi, since no one has ever praised him. The next day, Koichi returns to his house after school and notices that his window has been completely closed by wooden boards, the carpenter was already leaving, but before that, the boy questions him about the window. Tagaisu says that through its sound could enter the room, so he isolated it completely, and his work was done. After this, the boy goes with his mother to the bedroom door to see the result. He opens the door and realizes that there is another door. Koichi doesn't understand this and opens the second door, but this would lead him to a third. The boy also notices that as he advances, the space becomes smaller. He continues on his way and opens four doors in total, until he reaches a small space made exclusively for his study, where only his desk could fit. Koichi thinks for a few minutes and manages to work out in his head a diagram of how his new room was created, he deduces that the carpenter used several layers of wood to create a small soundproof room. Even with the extremely small place, the boy managed to study for a few hours without any interruptions, but he could not believe it when he could hear his brother's voice, realizing that Suchi was probably in the spaces between the walls of his room. Koichi goes down to the basement, as he believes the younger boy has entered there. He goes through a few openings and finally finds his brother making the strange sounds he was hearing in his room. A chase begins, but Suchi manages to escape due to the many passages that exist in the place, Koichi in the middle of the chase ends up getting hurt when passing through a wall with many nails and finally falls into a mud puddle. Koichi stops for a moment and decides to change his strategy, he simply ignores his younger brother completely. Over the next few days, the boy found another place to study, meanwhile Suchi continued to make noises in his room, believing his brother was in the place. Eventually, the boy gets tired of making strange sounds and passes out in the middle of that isolated room. We come to the third macabre story, entitled, Headless Sculptures. At a certain school, after school ends, Okabe, teacher and artist in the art club, talks to his two students about his sculptures. 
he explains to Shimada and Rumi that he likes to sculpt bodies without heads, because people could imagine several possibilities for a single statue. His students admire him for his way of thinking and believe that he really is a great artist. The next day, Rumi arrives at school and soon notices a great commotion. The girl approaches two classmates and is told that someone has taken the life of Professor Okabe. Rumi is startled by this, because the day before she was talking to him normally. Her colleague says that a senior was the one who found the body in the morning in the art room, but the teacher's head was removed from the body and has not been found so far. Rumi recalls that the day before, before she left, her friend Shimada was the last one who stayed with the teacher and the boy asked her not to tell anyone that he was at school at that time. With this in mind, Rumi goes to her friend's house after school, she chats briefly with him, until the boy comes out of the house and asks directly if the young woman believes he was responsible for taking Professor Okabe's life. The girl denies this, but before she can ask any more questions, the boy says he needs to show her something important, the two then leave, and Shimada continues with a completely different expression than usual. At that moment, two students walk through the school in search of an English book that was in the art room, on the spot, they come across the horror scene where the art teacher's body was found. They follow scared and try to act quickly to get out of that room as fast as possible, however, the girls hear knocking at the door of the sculpture room, they notice that there was someone on the other side, but they can't identify it. Then the door slowly opens to reveal Professor Okabe, his face bruised and his skin a bizarre color. That same night, Shimada tells her friend that the art teacher was alive and hiding in the old school building. He then invites her to visit the man, and despite the girl's misgivings, she decides to accept, and the pair makes their way to the art room. As they enter the sculpture room, Shimada tells them that the professor will arrive soon and that they should wait for him. Rumi notices that all the sculptures in the room are gone, and that the room exudes a strong stench. Shimada locks the door and removes the mask that was on his face. As she begins to talk to her friend, the girl realizes that although she hears Shimada's voice, his mouth is not moving. Quickly the young man explains that the professor was there all along, he removes the cloth covering one of the statues and there was the head of his former professor attached to a sculpture. The boy removes his head and asks the girl to calm Temple the greatest artist of all time. Rumi panics at this and slaps his friend in the face, but as she does so, the boy's head spins and falls to the ground. The body, however, continues to move on its own. The girl tries at every moment to dodge the various attacks until she kicks it and discovers that it is a plaster statue. The young girl then acts quickly and grabs the room key that was on the floor and tries to open the door. Meanwhile, a plaster statue begins to move with a knife in its hands, trying to approach the girl to attack her, but Rumi manages to get out in time, however, another sculpture was positioned so that the girl would not try to escape. Rumi searches for another way to save herself, while the statues continue their hunt. The girl finally manages to find a room to take cover, but when she looks around, she finds several bodies scattered on the floor and without their heads. Meanwhile, the plaster statues were fighting to decide who would get the young one's heads. When they noticed Rumi's presence, they walked towards her and cornered her, starting the procedure to remove her head. We come to the fourth and final story called, Suchi's Beloved Pet. After leaving school, Sayuri finds a cat abandoned by the road, she tries to help it and takes it to her house. When her parents arrive, the young girl and her brother, Koichi, try to convince them to keep the pet. The parents agree to take care of the animal and the girl gives it the name Korin. The animal was living a quiet life from that moment on, until it came across the couple's youngest son, Suchi. The boy tries to scare him with his mouth full of nails, so the feline runs away and completely ignores Suchi. The bizarre boy does not accept to be ignored and ends up tying a rope around Korin's neck. He says he will teach him a lesson, but before he can do anything, his sister intervenes and slaps him in the face. Soon after, the cat scratches the boy with its claws. Later, Koichi tells his mother that this trait of violence present in Suchi could become a serious problem in the future. He advises her to stop defending the boy, because those who commit acts of aggression against animals could easily perform the same action on people. The bizarre boy was receiving the bandage from his mother, he becomes enraged upon hearing these words from his own brother, his anger is so great that Sayuri ends up suffering from a small shock to her body. Suchi laughs at the situation, and a short time later, in his room, states that he has made a curse against his brothers and something much worse is coming. The next day, Koichi and Sayuri search for their pet cat, they walk through the house and come across the bizarre brother performing an insane prank on the pet. Suchi has attached a lifeless poisonous snake to a line and lures the cat with it, his brothers ask him to stop immediately, but at that moment, Korin manages to bite the animal and takes it into a corner, where it begins to devour it. From that day on, the cat's calm and harmless behavior changed completely, he began to behave wildly and gradually hunt giant insects for food or even for fun. 
After a few days, the little kitten brought out a bizarre insect that the brothers had never seen in their lives. It looked more like an arachnid with several eyes and legs, but Suchi, when confronted with it, claims that the animal came out of the depths of hell. On a certain night, the entire family realizes that the house is covered with a large amount of cat hair. Koichi also explains to his parents that he has closed all the doors and windows so that Korin cannot get out and bring something bizarre into the residence. Sayuri asks her older brother for help, as she believes Suchi has the animal in his room. When they get there, the brothers find Korin and Sayuri asks her brother to return the animal, but as she approaches him, the girl goes into shock when she is confronted with the demonic expression on her pet's face. Koichi then tries to take the cat for himself, but before he could do anything, the kitten becomes enraged and releases a gigantic electric discharge. Suchi also receives the electrical discharge and after a few seconds, a large explosion takes place in the house. The next day, the family meets Suchi in the hospital, he is completely injured from the shock he received, but even in this state, he curses everyone in his family. Sayuri realizes that Korin is back to normal after the bizarre event, at least that is what she believes. Which of these tales was the most disturbing, do you think you would survive all of them? So, what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.